Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Working Audio Tools podcast. You may notice this isn't my usual setup because during the editing process of this podcast, I decided, as I said at the end of last episode, to split this interview with Chris into two parts because it was getting quite long. We have another hour or so ahead of us today where we will find where we left off last week, the cliffhanger that Chris was about to suggest to Paul in terms of his career. I think you'll love the idea. Enjoy the episode. It's been emotional and we'll see you on the other side. Like, like Paul, I got bad news for you, man. You're, you're supposed to make plugins, dude. <laughs> loads of people have said that to me. Yeah. You're supposed to. I know, loads of people. You fu- it's fucking, it's the most obvious thing in the entire world. Go fucking make plugins and figure that out because, and here's what I want to say to everyone listening to this show. I was a full-time mastering engineer. That's all I ever wanted to do was master records. I just, I knew I had to be in music. I knew I was not healthy enough to tour. Being on the road just messed with me in weird ways. So I mastered so I could stay in with my family. That was the goal. And I built that business up and it was awesome. And I worked a lot. I hustled my ass off. And then I got into business coaching. And I you know, worked with Amy Grammy and Tony Winters, you know, still, still taking clients, chrisgramcoaching.com. If, if anyone is like, God, I, I need to learn more about this. When I started doing that, it was great. It was amazing. But then when COVID hit, my health crashed. Guys, I was having seizures. I was hospitalized as a suicide risk. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't think I was a suicide risk, but now looking back and knowing what I know, um, I, I was in a bad spot. Mm-hmm. And you know, the stuff that was coming out or that needed to come out was like stuff they would never put in a rated R movie. I mean, it was the fucking darkest stuff involving a priest that you can imagine, uh, or a ring of priests. And when I finally got kicked out of my own home by my ex-wife, that lit a fire under my ass. And I went full blast on my own healing. And when I started to heal, I couldn't work often. It was very challenging. And so what I wish I had said on the Six Figure Home Studio more often, or at all, is build your career, but while you're at it, work on making content. And then work on building your content career. And then while you're at it, work on building passive income in the background. Mm Work on building something that can keep paying you even when you have health issues in the future. Because you're flesh and bone, man. Shit's going to get fucked up in your life. And there will be times when you can and cannot work. Passive income that runs in the background. I, I, maybe I shouldn't say this on air, but like this past December was the first month that Bounce Butler paid all of my bills. Wow. And when that happened, it fucking ch- it changed my life. Like I realized, oh my gosh, I have not been investing in this. I haven't been adding new features as quickly as I should. I haven't been marketing it at all. Like I've just been letting it sit in the background. And I'm when I and to be honest, di- getting divorced is expensive. <laughs> it's extremely expensive, and my finances were a shit show through COVID. They were awful. Couldn't work. Going through a divorce. Thank God for Bounce Butler. You know, I, was, I, I didn't get rich off it, but my God, um, it was the difference many months with my life as, as I focused on more important things. And the investment that I was able to make in my own health has paid off and that now I am helping more people more than I ever dreamed I possibly could. I had the time to figure out how, this, how the Ohio State House works. It's the most, according to the FBI, it is the most corrupt state house in the nation. And I had the time because of the life that I had built, I had gotten to where I was charging, you know, I'm, I'm quite expensive as a business coach. It is not a, a cheap endeavor um, to work with me. But because I was making a lot per hour coaching, I'd raised my rates a couple times. And because I had Bounce Butler, I was able to invest in my health. And the return on investment for that was insane. Um, like, I, I will never completely wrap my mind around the work that I've been able to do as a result of the time I had because I had, I built passive income. Paul, you are supposed to make plugins. Go figure it out. Yeah. I've just not got, like I'm at a point now, but I think when I, when I see all YouTubers and stuff now talking about burnout and like, just to give you a bit of an insight, I like the way my life is now. So I do, I work Mm -hmm. Monday to Friday, normal Monday to Friday job. And then Monday night we do this podcast. Tuesday night I edit the podcast. Wednesday night I film uh, my YouTube video 
Um, and then normally Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I have time. That's really the only time I have with my wife and kids. Sometimes on a Saturday or a Sunday, if I've got time, I will um, do a mix or I'll do a bit of research. But like my with, with my autism, my life is basically all audio. So like I've got to try and build my relationship oh, with my man. kids. I've got to build a relationship yeah, with my dude. wife and so uh, making plugins man fucking hell like here's what i would do it's it's just not it's just i hear you so so autism tell me about that you're on the autism spectrum right yep yep that's what you're trying to say okay asperger's but when i was diagnosed it was um the the autism spectrum disorder so it was all one thing and Mm -hmm. then it all got brought down so mine boils down to asperger's it's really annoying i'm going to say this on air right see when people are autistic i'm very literal but they keep on changing things because of the way society changes. So it was like you can't <laughs> you can't call can Aspergers anymore yeah. because of the connotations Aspergers had. Um, you can't say high function and low functioning, which is really good for me as a way to try and explain to people. But basically, yeah. uh, mine is ADD, which has a massive benefit to the audio stuff because it's hyper focus. I can drown everything else out. It doesn't help the family yeah. stuff uh, or social life. I have no fucking social life because yeah. I'm so focused and passionate on what I do. Hey, you, uh, there's like a whole new word on it's social tough. media that's a combination of ADD and autism. I, I was diagnosed with ADD as yeah. a kid. Once I got to the point where I had healed enough from PTSD, I noticed I was still having episodes. And that's when the conversation with my therapist about autism began. And um, this is something I haven't been very public about. But what I learned with autism is that autism, the manifestation of autism usually manifests around special yeah, interest. 100%, yeah. Right? You, you get this like idea in your head of like, I want to learn everything there is to know about American history. So you <laughs> yeah, do. <it's> me. <laughs> I want to learn everything there is about Apple Script. So you do. And th- this is, I had a conversation with a woman I'm, I'm, I've been seeing recently. I've tried to explain this to her. I'm like, for me, my autism is. I get hyper focused on one topic, yep. I become world class at it, and then I move on to a yep. new topic. Rabbit holes, isn't it? It's just, here's, it's just here's, a different rabbit holes. Rabbit yeah. holes. I can relate to that. If you yeah. want to master, if you want to master your autism, I think I, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with even just what I've said, <laughs> but I think turning autism into a dragon that you're riding mm. around and you are kicking ass with it. That happens all the time. Elon Musk has yep. autism, for Christ's That's sake. That's what I do. What the I've fuck? I've pivoted. I've swapped That it guy has, has figured out how to leverage What I do it. is, I, when I yeah. speak to people, I almost try and say that the reason that I'm so hyper-focused and people say to me, Paul, I remember when I first started out, I bet a lot of big engineers started getting in touch with me because I was on like a shitty fucking laptop with just cheap uh, headphones. And they were like, Paul, how is it you could hear these subtle nuances that I hear on my 25 grand fucking speaker set up to my big converters and you could hear them. It's called misophonia. It comes with <laughs> autism and it makes sound excruciatingly painful all the time. <laughs> but it's just, I know what it is. I, that's the way I see it now. So when I say, so again, somebody got in contact with me this week and they were like, are you going to be doing yeah. Atmos mixes? Because they were like, oh, I've heard a lot of your uh, mixes from the podcast. And they're like, I think the way that you do, like uh, you place things in the stereo field and the way that you kind of pan and depth and stuff. I think it'll work really, I think you'll be really, really good at Atmos. And again, it's like, my, I was speaking to my wife about it and I'm just like, it's autism. It's autism. It's my superpower. And that's the way I see it now. Instead, okay, there's a lot of negative stuff. Of course it is. Like, socially I'm crippled and I have a lot of anxiety. My wife's an absolute diamond and I'd be fucked without her. But, you know, it, you've got to try and flip it. You've got to try and focus on the good things. The good things about my autism is yeah. what it makes me who I am. People love Paul Third, the audio geek. That's why I've got this fucking jumper, because that's who I am. And I'm like, embrace it. You know what I mean? Instead of being somebody yeah. that's got to be this big, massive personality, big I am, and try to be somebody else, I'm just like, this is who I am. I'm Paul Third. I'm a big audio geek. You either like it or you don't. This is the way I do things. This is the way I'm going to mix your records. and I love that. Yeah, that's the way it's going to be. DistroKid sponsor the Working Audio Tools podcast, and you can get 30% off your first year subscription using the VIP link in the YouTube video description and podcast show notes. DistroKid makes distribution of your music easy with unlimited uploads, and you get to keep 100% of your royalties and earnings. 
Join over a million artists who rely on DistroKid to get their music into Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, TikTok, Tidal, Instagram, and all other streaming platforms now and in the future. The new DistroKid app is available on iOS. Go and download it from the App Store now. From here, you can upload new releases. You can see your DistroKid earnings and withdraw these earnings. You can view and share your hyperfollow links. You can check your streaming statistics from Spotify and Apple and even add and edit lyrics and song titles. So keep track of your releases on the move with the new DistroKid app available on iOS. Download it from the App Store now. Let me let me tell you guys a story so about about exactly that. And I like I am fully on board with everything you said and I am so proud of you for finding a way to turn this autism in on itself yeah. and 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 make it into into something really amazing. I got my kids a 3D printer, a really really nice 3D printer for Christmas. And I got on that thing and printed out so many toys for my kids. It was so fun. It was a, it was a special interest. I went all in. Like we we bought all the things, like modified it. I'm pretty good at it now. And I ended up designing a set of dominoes. The seven dominoes, first domino is normal size. Second domino is 50% bigger. Third domino is 50% bigger than the second domino. The last domino is like 16 inches tall. If you put them all on a table in the right order, you push over that first tiny little domino and the rest of them come falling down. And it's so satisfying. There was a YouTube video, if, if you guys are interested, um, Mr. Beast did, we were talking about him earlier, but Mr. Beast did a video where he made his last domino is probably a hundred feet tall and they smash a convenience store <laughs> with the last domino. But it, it illustrates this point of, there's so many things in this world, legislation's one of them. You wanna know how I pass the law? I got my dominoes in the right order. I knew there's a number of things I needed to do in the right order. And each thing I did gave me momentum to do the next thing that I could only have done with, with, with the right size domino. And so when I was on my healing journey and you know, discovered uh, the painful realization, a lot of people don't survive the types of trauma that I had. A lot of people either get addicted to drugs and die of an, of an overdose or the suicide rates are two to three times higher. And when I started to learn about that, I got three kids and I ain't fucking going anywhere. <laughs> I am going to dad my ass off. It is the most important thing to me. I am staying here and it's going to be awesome. And it has been awesome. And so what I did was I decided to, and this is like my new catchphrase here, guys. I decided to just keep doing the next scary thing. And so my motto, my, my internal guiding compass is do the next scary mm -hmm. thing not the scariest thing you know don't like if skydiving makes you pee yourself when you think about it don't go skydiving yet maybe like uh go bungee jumping first right like or maybe uh start going up and down the slide at the local uh park just like <laughs> take your time and just do the next scary thing if this if going down the water slide at the water park down the road scares the sh scares you but not to the same level of, you know, skydiving, go do the water slide. After the water slide, you're going to have more yeah, courage. Okay. And then you can do the next scary thing. In this conversation, man, you have to keep doing the next scary thing. You have to do everything in the right order. And you have autism and you can figure out what the next order is, what the right order is, if that's what you channel your special mm. interest in. So if you can figure that out, get it in the, right, in the right order and figure out how to get yourself in a place where eventually the domino is, learn to write your own plugins. A, a lot of business coaches would, would say to you, find someone to partner with. And if anyone listening is, you know, wants to partner with Paul, reach out to him for sure. But Paul, I think you need to get your hands To dirty. be fair, I've had a few people say to me, Paul, if you were to make plugins, the amount of people that would buy your plugins would be crazy yeah. because... I am that person that's mm, like, Paul, you got to do it, man. Like, You've got the market. I know, and I'm so anal, and I'm like, I would make a plug in the way that I think it should be. But it would probably yeah. cripple me because I would do be so, like, Tim Petrick, for example, he's the guy. Why don't you team up with him? Team up with him. Yeah, but it's hard. Oh, you have to get into Nebula and Convolution and fuck me. It's like. But, but team up with him for something that's more accessible. Mm. What he's doing with that is so inaccessible to so many people. I've got no interest in ever yeah, I've thought about any that, of that stuff or, or the acoustic stuff. Yeah. 
But if you can do something that everyone can access with his technical know-how behind it, That'd be my son, your yeah. technical skills, if you can get a loan to have a year off work so you don't have to do the day job and you can focus on that studio or investment, sorry, not a loan, investment. But I think that's the crippling thing and I yeah. think that's where, there's times where, you know, like I curse Ed quite a lot because um, as much as I love being and I chose to be where I am with my wife and my kids, um, I do think that Ed is in a great position in his life where, you know, he's he, he's got him and his partner and, you know, she's, again, very supportive and Ed's got this drive. And I think that's what me and Ed both have that you need to have to make this work as a belief and a drive. And I think something that me and Ed do together is we push each other. So Ed's, Ed's well, got his studio. It's amazing I give that perception. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, Paul, I, what I'm trying, the point I'm trying to get across to you is I think you're a little different. Is you drive for people on the autism spectrum that are high functioning yeah. and have Asperger's, very rarely the issue. The problem is that the drive is in the wrong mm. direction. My drive, when I first got married, I'm so embarrassed about this, but you know, I met my ex, uh, I was madly in love with her. We had a quick date. Uh, we dated for like seven and a half months. We got married. And I was just so excited, especially coming from the trauma that I had is I felt like I had escaped when I got married. I felt like, okay, I've started over. We're going to build a life together. And I would produce records all day long. And then I would go upstairs and we would sit and watch TV together while I had my laptop open, pouring over schematics for vintage Fender mm, amplifiers. Sounds like someone I would. <laughs> and I would, right? And, and I would just sit there and be like, okay, that's the blocking capacitor on all, okay, that's. I would just, I felt like maybe I could produce hit records if I understood what every capacitor in, in my 1966 Fender Princeton Reverb did. I am, I understand why I did that. <laughs> so did I, I understand why you did it too. <laughs> the important thing here is that I am able to love every version of myself that I've ever been, which is quite the challenge. Yeah. But my special interest was this amplifier. When if I had been a wiser person, I would have picked something a little more conducive to a happy life mm -hmm. with my new wife. <laughs> um, as and uh, uh, to, to be fair, eventually I did. It took me a it took me a long, long, long time to figure that out. But what I find um, is that if I can give myself the opportunity, you know, when I feel a pull towards a topic, and I'm like, ah, oh, Apple Script, I must learn. Ooh, Xcode. That's where I developed uh, Bounce Butler in. I will learn all the things about uh, Xcode. I have not. You cannot learn all the things about Xcode. It's way too complicated. But when you feel a pull towards a topic like that, and that topic could also create passive income for you, pretty damn good chance yeah, definitely. that that's one of your next dominoes. So finding a way to just um, optimize for fun. Don't, don't create a program around what you need to do, what you need to learn. What's the fucking dopest thing that's relatively simple that you could build next? Is it a compressor? Is it a, like literally the simplest thing you could possibly do that other people could use? That's my advice to you, Paul, and to you, Ed. Make a product that your audience wants, the simplest thing you can possibly make. Make it free at first but make it so that you can eventually put a paywall mm -hmm. behind it. Put it behind a paywall. Make it free so that as many people in your audience use it as possible. And, and everyone listening here, whatever they come out with in the future, if you love them, download the free version and use the shit out of it and actually send them emails to give them feedback on their products, good or bad. And then you guys take that feedback and you use it to iterate to improve the product. And you find, uh, if you're really lucky, product market fit. That's what this podcast is most valuable as. It's not for getting sponsors or for getting free audio gear or for even for getting people to hire you. The most valuable aspect of having a successful podcast is that you get feedback in the actual marketplace. And if you can take that feedback and you can lean into it in areas where you can't, Brian used to tell this story that I loved on our, on our old show about how the first time he got Pro Tools, he would go, th I think it was like, he would go in 36 hour stretches. He would use Pro Tools in his basement for 36 hours in a row, and then he'd fall asleep. And then he'd wake up and then he'd work on Pro Tools for 36 hours and oh, fall God. asleep. 
Oh. Not a healthy thing Especially Pro to do. Tools. Fucking well, not, hell. Yeah. Not recommended. Not recommended. But that's a great example of, well, frankly, I, I think it's important to, to mention that Brian and I don't talk right now. We, we had a bad breakup. We are not almost talking. We are not talking. But I, I use him as a story because, you know, hopefully that if he hears this, he hears it with respect and, and dignity coming from me towards him. But that was a, such a great example of he used his special interest and that drive to dig, you know, he, he, you know, he, he has ADHD and he dug super deep on that topic. And anyone that's met Brian and known him for more than two minutes, it's very clear to them that he does that and has done it on a bunch of different topics. At a certain point, Brian and I, what were we you know, really connected on was that our special interest was small business. And so we read all these small business books, you know, reframe them for audio industry and became influencers. For you, I'm speaking specifically to Paul, but Ed, like, I, I really want you to hear this too. If I could talk to Chris Graham from 2017 and give him advice, the first thing I would say to him is do whatever the fuck you can to create the space to get into therapy right fucking now. Do not DIY your mental health. The brain doesn't work mm. like that. Through my work, I've got counseling just now. So I'm getting I'm getting counseling awesome. um, every three, four man. weeks. They've got this thing in UK called Access to Work where you can get a grant. The government gives you a grant. And so they're giving me 12 free sessions like hourly sessions for mm. uh, like coping mechanisms and stuff. I'm just taking as much as I can because I think yeah, take I think what's can. difficult. Full yeah, blast. I think it's difficult where I don't want to do this thing where you know it's like um, because I'm autistic, things are different because everybody goes through their own struggles. Everybody, I think, I think there's an uh, there's a yeah. there's a no two people yeah, with and as well that everybody struggles with mental health. You know, what I mean, in different ways. It's just that you know everybody struggles differently. You know, but yeah. for me, um, it is a thing where you do need somebody to calibrate you every so often i mean because my counselor just now is yeah. i've spoken to ed about it again talking about how i can deal with things better socially because i think that socially i've been keeping myself back in my career because my networking has been I've, everybody's got to come to me and i'm very fortunate that people come to me but my counselor's been going right well maybe you should try and you know use that as a benefit and say right they're coming to yeah. you but right paul do you speak to them after that do you actually like be like right you actually took the time to come and like speak to me. I'm going to then converse with you. And I've been trying to do that and, you know, make little notes for myself and converse with people more and mm. bring myself out, Michelle. But again, you need sometimes a, a, a professional to sit there and rationalize the way that you are and go, no, you're doing that because of this. Yeah. And think about doing this next time and think about this and that. And it's very, very beneficial. Yeah. Anyone that's listening, if they're familiar with me, it's probably because Six Figure Home Studio. So they probably are thinking business, Chris Graham and business, right? So let me put this in business terms for recording studios. You are in a situation. It's December. You want that sweet, sweet tax deduction. So you are getting ready to justify buying a new set of monitors, right? And you're like, oh, should I get the barefoots? Am I ready for the barefoots? Should I upgrade? Should I go with the general? Maybe oh, the I should PSIs get the general. Ads. And Ed's terms. <laughs> yeah. Don't buy barefoot. <laughs> okay. So you're thinking, well, well, if I want to buy the barefoots, you know, I, I could do a better job. But, you know, let's think about this rationally. Okay. What would the return on potential return on investment for these monitors? Well, they're, you know, X, Y, and Z dollars. And, you know, if I got these, then maybe I could get these clients. So, um, you know, I would say, how much money could I make as a result of owning these monitors within the next year? Oh, um, I don't know, probably $7. Okay. So that would be <laughs> your benefit on that investment is you're going to make an extra $7 that year. Overlooking, so it's not a great overlooking the key factor, that is enjoyment, enjoying what you're doing. Worth every penny. Yes. If you got the money, right? Or, or you're in a situation where I'm going to be real lame here, but or in a situation where like, hmm, maybe I'll go to bouncebutler.com and download this AI. And instead of bouncing my songs manually, I'll batch them at the end of my day. And then while I'm at home with my family, my computer will do 50 bounces in a row and then text me when it's done because Bounce Butler is like a virtual recording studio assistant. That is a significantly better return on investment than virtually any kind of audio gear, right? But... But, Excellent plug, by the way. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. The single best investment you can make is in your mental health. 
period, because, and I'm living proof of this, I had the luxury of being able to fully invest in my mental health. Thank God I had family that supported me in the midst of a divorce and a, a form of income that didn't require that much of my time. Um, but when I began to work on my mental health, and I, I, would, I would phrase it as, you know, you can ask yourself, are you full blast on your mental health? Are you going as hard as you possibly can? Are you investing as much in your mental health as you can possibly spare? If you are full blast, your brain will change. And instead of having this experience where you have, mental health lesson here, an intrusive thought at the end of your mix, oh, I don't know, your highs are a little boosted. They're going to think you're not a real professional. He's looking at you, Ed. He's you're looking at you, pastor. Ed. <laughs> I know, I know. Right? <laughs> That's a mental health issue. That, that was spurred by an intrusive thought. And that intrusive thought was motivated to keep you safe. The human brain realized, oh, man, we want the best future for him ever. And so we're going to give him some anxiety over his performance so that he'll work harder. It's not fun, but it's what's going on. It's what the human brain is doing. When you make the investment into figuring out why you're having intrusive thoughts, why you're ruminating, why you can't get over something that happened in the past and you're just thinking about it again and again and again, I can't believe he said that. Oh my God, why did he say, I remember he, he said this and when did he meant this? That's ruminating. Or another thing that, that you might be struggling with is eternalizing. This idea that like, oh shit, I am sad because I lost a project to a competitor, and there's a part of me that believes that this is my new normal and I will always feel this way and that this is the way business is going to be from here on out. What just happened is indicative of my entire future. That's called just eternalizing. just described my last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> eternalizing will fuck your shit up. It will constantly, constantly sabotage you. And instead of, back, you know, back to my point about I almost never EQ'd on my masters, you know, very, very gently. I used a lot of multiband compression for those of you that are super shocked by that. So I, I was doing EQ, but I was doing dynamically most of the time, but very little. The more mentally healthy I was, the more ability I had to make the right decision that was based on a centered and grounded version of me versus the version of me that just wanted to be safe, that just wanted to impress other people, and that just wanted everybody else to think I was the best, my ego. And it was my mental health issues that created the most problems in the studio for me. And it created the most, this was so funny. Um, but I remember at the, at the peak of mastering, you know, I'd, I'd work on about 190, for 192 people a month Oof. was the average for wow. me. Um, Jesus. It was nuts. But you got to keep in mind, I I'm still making creative decisions back then, but my files are being downloaded automatically, my notes. Uh, for what the project needs are being presented to me as the session loads. The session is loading automatically. The bounces are happening automatically. The sending is happening automatically. I'm literally just making audio decisions and interacting with customers. Nothing else. So like I, I could actually, I could work at an extremely high level for 192 people. But every once in a while, a friend would hire me. I remember I mentioned my friend Chris Pyle before that hired me at my first studio. He hired me to master a record and I sent the record back. And at the time, I almost never got revision requests. Almost never. I just had developed this like sixth sense of what the client wanted. I would do it, send it back, and they would they'd release it. But when I get a, a project from a friend, somebody I knew, somebody who I wanted to impress, wasn't a good mastering engineer. <laughs> I compressed more, fuck, messing around with my attack and my release and I'm doing new, weird, funny things. I'm definitely boosting the highs. I'm definitely boosting the lows. I'm just being a complete tool bag <laughs> of an audio engineer. I'm just like, I'm, I'll show them how I can. <laughs> I'm going to get this to negative one luffs. It's going to be awesome. My God. But it's still going to have dynamics. <laughs> Nobody knows how I do it. <laughs> right? So I, I would make all these decisions out of a, out of a desire to be respected which was out of a desire to feel safe, which was because I had feelings from my childhood that I never let myself process and I still hadn't processed. I got into EMDR therapy, EMDR. EMDR 
is a type of therapy where the therapist is using uh, some real low-tech technology to simulate rapid eye movement, the same type of movement your eyes have when you're dreaming, to help you sit with a feeling and actually process it. And when you can sit with that feeling, sometimes you remember some fucked up shit. And you start to realize, oh, <laughs> that's why uh, sometimes I freak out about things that nobody else thinks are important. But I seem to think it was pretty important that my kids be homeschooled and not have babysitters that weren't family members <laughs> or, you know, all sorts of weird crap like that. So I just I guess my thesis here, you know, as I process what it was like being, uh, you know, famous at Nam, <laughs> being Nam famous. Yeah. As I process that, uh, and I think back to, you know, what it was like having this amazing relationship with this big audience. God, I wish I could tell them all, hey, you're listening to this show because you're trying to figure out what's the best investment that you're going to make to grow your career. It's therapy for all of us. It's, it's figuring out how to be grounded and healthy enough that you make decisions all the time out of wisdom, not out of an unmet yeah, desire to be respected mm-hmm. and loved. It doesn't matter what fucking gear you use. If, if you are too motivated by what other people think of you and, and, and you, you feel like you know what imposter syndrome, there's no such thing as imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is just intrusive mm-hmm. thoughts. And the intrusive thoughts are coming because there's work in there to do. It's like, it's an indicator. It's your brain saying, hey man, I'm, I, I have something I have not been able to complete yet. And the side effect of that is intrusive thoughts. When you get into therapy, my experience, I am writing the best songs of my life. I am writing the best words of my life. And I'm being creative in a way that has helped thousands and thousands and thousands of people in the state of Ohio in a way that, no offense to the Six Figure Home Studio and my previous podcast, but you know, I'm, I'm so thankful for that show. And it was an amazing experience. And I learned so much and I got to help a lot of people, but not in the same way that I am now. When they voted in the Senate on my law, on Scout's Honor, I sat there in between my two sons and three senators stood up and singled me out my name for being brave. And my, my son sat there and listened to it. It was creativity that got me there. I came up with a creative solution that nobody else had been able to find. And I found a place where the Democrats and the Republicans could agree. It was creativity. And that creativity was unlocked by going full blast on my healing. I'm getting, I'm, you're not supposed to cry on British podcasts. I know. I'm so sorry. (laughs) No, you you nearly nearly had me going earlier anyway. (laughs) DistroKid hosts a range of visually engaging social media promotion tools to help your release stand out from the crowd. Creative and colorful social media cards incorporate your artwork to help your release stand out. These are free to download and can be highly effective promoting your release. DistroKid also offer mini videos, which are free, short, customizable videos incorporating your artwork and a short clip of your track. And if this wasn't enough, DistroKid also have a tool to create a Spotify canvas generator, which is the video that plays in the background when you're playing a song on Spotify. Simply choose a theme and choose from dozens of different creative artwork concepts. These are free to use and great for engaging your audience, available on DistroKid. For an additional subscription of $8.25 a month, you can get your music videos distributed to Apple Music, Vivo and Tidal, and you'll keep 100% of your royalties. With DistroVid from DistroKid. What, what's your next domino well, then? It, it, that's a great question. So obviously I'm thinking about podcasting. You know, Creativity and Mental Health was a show I started and did one episode with one of my buds. We're talking about getting that going again. Please do. And I'm I also throwing around episode, the side. And I sent it to a friend of mine is, who is, was in, has had a very almost identical experience as you. And I'm one of about three people. Mm told and I forwarded the episode to him and he was very grateful. Damn. Please do more of those. Well, here's the weird thing. I get more feedback on that one episode of that one podcast than all of the feedback that I still get for Six Figure Home Studio and Six Figure Creative. So I know (laughs) that there is something, there is another domino there 
there's also part of me that's like, maybe it would be better to brand it as the Chris Graham show, but I'm aware of the irony that I'm deciding whether to go the completely narcissistic <laughs> route or whether to do creativity and mental health. The next domino is Ohio is one of six states. And trigger warning uh, for anyone, I'm, I'm going to talk about some a big R word here, um, but not my own no details about, we're not going to talk about it specifically. But here in Ohio, um, husbands are legally allowed to big R their wives. We're one of the only places on earth where that is true. And part of this push to change these laws spurred a new conversation about that. And one of my best friends, my bestie, who's a legislator, made a bill and we got it passed in the Ohio House of Representatives. And now it's in the Senate. And we're about a month away from starting to have hearings on that. Um, so the next domino is removing the spousal exemption for rape in the state That's of Ohio. Amazing. Massive. So after that, we'll see. But that's what my main focus is on. And, More you know, it's strange. Um, I don't know. Um, so there's only a few states that do it. Um, I have niched down to do activism in the state of Ohio. And um, my S Scouts Honor Law, um, I don't know if, I don't think it, it ever came, became law, but it did become a bill in Indiana. I've thought about that. But, you know, probably the next thing, and, and this is actually funny um, that I've thought about a lot, is probably podcasting is less important for me to do than being a guest on podcasts. I think doing a whole lot of interviews is probably one of the next dominoes for me. Because at this point, I, I could get interviews on on some big shows and, you know, tell these, I, I'm, this is 10% of the crazy ass stories I've come up with. It's 10% of, of my experience over the course of the last year. The, the other thing I'm still processing is the plan to change these laws, this is so weird. This is going to be a really hard left turn. We're going to get hippy dippy as, as hell real quick. The plan to change these laws came to me um, in a lucid dream. And I learned how to meditate myself into a lucid dream. So I can do it on command now. And that's where I learned how to do this stuff. It was like an idea for a song. It just showed up in a dream. And I woke up and I did it and it worked. And I made a law. And it brought hundreds of millions of dollars to Boy Scout survivors in the state of Ohio. But that's because I got into therapy, guys. That's because I, not just, and not just therapy, I was doing yoga classes and meditation classes and, you know, really, I was full blast. The creativity that is locked behind your childhood trauma for most people, they don't have any idea. They don't have any idea what their actual potential potential is. They're thinking about their limitations and their gifting. Who fucking cares? You got trauma. You haven't actually done the, the healing journey thing yet. You haven't actually gone to therapy. You can only access a small percentage of your gifting. And th that's what I've found out over the past, you know, couple of years is that, boy, I thought I was pretty hot shit when I was making the six figure home studio. When I go to NAM and people would walk up see my purple shirt and introduce themselves. I, th I thought that was awesome. I th thought I was a badass. I got humbled when I was hospitalized. And, you know, now I look back at that, remember it fondly, and I look at the work I'm doing now, and I realize, like, just getting started, man. And it, it's about investing mm -hmm. in yourself because the biggest return on investment you're ever going to get, it's Definitely not audio. Care. No, I hundred percent. It's working on yourself. Hundred percent. And man, Paul, for you, autism. You mix that in there. People with autism are four times more likely to have PTSD. Um, what I found, the EMDR therapy that I got, there was a study done recently that uh, people who have a combination of trauma and autism see a reduction in both their presentation of trauma and their presentation of autism if they have successful EMDR therapy. And that's definitely what happened to me. There, there was a massive shift in the way I was processing my existence. But man, the human mind is so mm. wild. And, and Paul, for you, if you can figure out how to develop your special interests in the right direction, and you stack them up on top of each other, just so, you are absolutely capable of paying all of your bills with software that you wrote yourself. Mm. I mean, I do have a lot of belief, and that's what my wife always says. She's just like, even with a studio, she was like, Paul, I would have never, ever, ever had the balls to just sit there and take a shell of a studio and go, right, that, 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 that. 
that's how much I'm going to spend. That's how I'm going to do it. This is all the content I'm going to do. And then it's going to take off and I'm going to speak to that, 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 and that, and I'll get in contact with that, that, and that. And I just believe it'll happen because I don't know what it is. That's, that's awesome. just what I do. I just have a stupid belief. Yeah. It's not stupid belief. I just have belief in myself. That I could, I don't know. I'm a realism. I'm a realist person and I just can see certain things and I know the paths and I can very little and I could just see them. So... Well, there's a beautiful thing with autism. My, my friends, some of my friends here in Columbus, Ohio, are are fond of, of telling me that I there's that I do have a certain naivete. No, I do. Yeah, that's one of the the distinguishable you know aspects of my personality is that I'm naive enough to believe I can do a lot of things, but then it turns out that I I can, and some that's of that um, is that's a blessing. <laughs> It, it's a blessing to believe you can do something that's impossible because humans suck. We're fucking awful at actually figuring out where our limitations are. And almost every human throughout all of history, I mean, go watch any movie at the movie theater. You know what the movie's going to be about? It's about somebody who thought their, their limitations were here, but it turned out they were here. I'm raising, I'm like moving my hands up and down for those of you <laughs> in audio world here. But, it, it it is it is the only story that we have in our society it is people finding that they can raise their limitations they can grow their gifting it's all about growth yeah and yeah or maybe lower their lower their limitations and grow their grow their gifting that sounds podcasty <laughs> there we go but with autism boy um that can become a very very different journey because of the way someone with autism processes information mm -hmm and fixates on a special interest um, is a whole nother piece. The problem is when you special interest on meaningless yeah, bullshit. Yeah. Like what capacitors do what in a Fender amplifier when you have no intention of being an electrical engineer. It's just a side mm -hmm. thing for you. So if you can start to get intentional about what your side quests are and make sure that, you know, they shouldn't, none of them should really suck. They should all mm -hmm. be fun. If if you're doing a side quest that's fun, you you will naturally fall into your special interest. That's my belief. Paul, I think your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to make the world's most simple, stupidest plug-in. It should be so dumb. It could just be a light that turns on when there's audio passing through it. Build that. And once you've built that, the next domino in your path will be pretty obvious. Just do something, make something really, really, really Well, simple. I do have Melda MXXX, which um, actually has all the building cores for you to build plugins. And I've actually built plugins with um, MXXX. So I, ha I have dabbled into it. But you're right. I think what you've made a very, and again, it's, fair, it's the longest podcast we've ever had. But it's been a really, really good one. No, Sorry. That's, that's, I, that's I think me. generally we've covered <laughs> way more than I think any other kind of audio podcast I think has ever covered. I think we've covered such a depth of field um but yeah i think you guys want to talk about oh, dinner no. before i go oh, I'm, about I'm just kidding <laughs> well, dan waddle on that that was that was enough at that time um but i think that yeah i think a good kind of way to end it would be kind of to think about you know again finding your usp but as you've said finding that how can you take your usp and how could you make passive income from that because the more passive income you can have so for example i can make i mm -hmm. could make plugins and they would make their own money because once I've created that plugin, like when you have a YouTube video, you could get a YouTube video that gets a fucking million and it just keeps on going in the algorithm and you keep on making money from all those videos that you've done. And it Yeah. And and let me be clear to anybody that's struggling with the businessy shit that we're talking about here, like, oh, that feels gross. <laughs> oh, I don't want to be a slut. Oh, I don't want to like whatever emotion that you're feeling, those are all valid. We're not talking about business and money. We're talking about space mm -hmm. to grow. And the best space that you can build for yourself to grow is to make some plugins <laughs> and sell them for money on the internet. And if you're lucky, um, you know, I've heard amazing things about, what is it, Sound Toys? Is that the subscription model? They've that's all like, got sub subscription models now. They've all the. Well, there, there's like a marketplace. It sounds something, but it's like, like Plugin Alliance. I have heard really great stories about people that have developed plugins and then moved there move there, you know, it's real estate, yeah, yeah. really. I mean, like, this is a, re this is like real estate investment. Bounce Butler is a property that I own. It's like a rental. 
the rent goes up a little bit each month. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, you might find that, you know, you make five plugins, you give it to those guys. And, you know, if you, if you negotiate a good deal with them, I don't know. I don't what, know I, I've never directly negotiated with them about anything, but I would admit, you know, there's the possibility that that could just mm. bam, start to take off. Or that if you can figure out, you know, the hard thing for me with Bounce Butler was figuring out licensing. And, you know, I knew it needed to be a subscription model because that's what everything is. It, just now, it needs yeah. updates regular. It, it, it is, but it's also the, the AI needs continually right, okay. taught. You know, I haven't seen Oppenheimer yet. Well, you think about how they made the bomb. They didn't just sit down and make a bomb. They had to like fuck around for a pretty long time. Yeah. <laughs> and be like, what, if, what about radon? What about plutonium? What about uranium? What about uranium-231? What about 232, 233? Like they had to really screw around a lot before things started to click. And I would, and I haven't seen the movie, but you know, I've read some about this. I would imagine that there was a whole level, there was a whole lot of steps to get to the point where they actually dropped the first one. And, you know, they had to work on building a, a giant factory to, to purify the uranium. Hundreds of thousands of people, I think, worked there. Um, but there were these steps where they were able to stack. Okay, we got the uranium factory. Cool. Okay. We got the, we figured out how to, you know, ignite the nuclear process. Okay, cool. You know, we figured out how we're going to, you know, they had all these different developmental issues they needed to fix, but they had to get them in the right order. And so both of you guys have the same problem right now. What you should be doing is trying to get this podcast leveraged into something that will pay you enough money to make something bigger and better than this mm, podcast. That's a good point, yeah. But you need space to do that. Can't fucking do that in the service industry unless you're charging an arm and a leg. And even if you are charging an arm and a leg, it is still very, very difficult because your attention is constantly pulled towards mm. the client. That's the nature of all service industries. And it's tough to go deep on something like that. But with this, you, know, you guys have an opportunity to, to build something that your audience, the market is speaking. You know, Paul, you've, you've used a really clear example here of you've had several people tell you to make mm. plugins. That's the market telling you. This is what we want to do. Branding's not what you call yourself. Branding's what people say about you when you're not there. And your brand is extremely conducive to making some fucking really nerdy yeah, plugins. Yeah. <laughs> and don't try to make them look like Waves or UAD. Make them as nerdy and as... They should tickle your fancy, mm. my bro. <laughs> like, you should just be like, oh, this is so stupid and I love it. Nah, I, I use this font. I like this font. I'm obsessed with this font. And I have these knobs. I like these knobs. Just nerd out on it. Make something super simple and then make the next most complicated thing and then the next most complicated thing. And <laughs> for your financial stability, I hope that it's a, a string of products. That's usually what it is. My sort of diversion into advocacy work here is a little odd. Um, but for a lot of people, Joey Sturgis like, taught me about this. He came out with a product um, early on in his content career. It was drum samples for only for Cubase. And he sold those, and I think he made like $20,000 or something like that in his first year. But then he had a, an email list. And he emailed his whole email list once he made a new product. And a lot of them bought that. And his email list grew. And yada, yada, yada. He's like six products in or 10 products in. He's got a team of however many people helping him build this stuff. But... I mean, Joey is a, I love Joey's story as far as our conversation today of, you know, he, he worked on some incredible records. He leveraged that into a content empire and he leveraged that into a product empire, digital product empire. And as a result of that, Joey, I don't know what Joey's doing with his free time, but I'm sure he yeah, loves Steven, it. Steven Slate's you know, probably it, it, another example, isn't it? Like started off like, yeah. Again, I don't even know what Steven Slate did before he started this drum sample thing, but again, it started off with like the drum, the trigger, and then all of a sudden the, the Slate Empire grew, yeah. and then he, then he sold it, sold it to SSL. And I actually yeah, didn't know does, that, yeah. and I'm good for him. I am proud of him. I, I, I too hope someday to sell a company. <laughs> that would be great. So, in a nutshell, let's round this up because this is getting on for our longest 
episode. Yeah, Although, yeah. I, sorry for the edit on this, guys. I kept going. I, I don't think there's going to be much to edit because I've not had to ask you barely any questions <laughs> because you've just answered stuff and flowed. Yeah, uh, you've got a very good flow, man. Like, I do, but hardly need to edit. edit. Oh, thank you. Slash, I'm sorry. So, um, just in a nutshell, one bit of advice for you've kind of covered it, but one bit of advice for people starting out wanting to build a business, whether it be mixing, mastering, Paul's plugins. So, yeah, Best bit of advice. I'll go back to what I, what I said to you guys earlier about, you know, I think you need to be building passive income, but I think you also need to be coaching at the same time. Because when you're coaching, you're actually, you're getting paid to learn mm, about the market. That's a good point. You're getting paid to learn the most granular thing you can about someone's experience. And especially if you're doing like, like you know, Paul, do m- mentor people in DOS. Yeah. If, if you're doing that and they're like, I never understand this, all right? I always have a hard time with this. You're going to find people. You'll find that everyone has a similar problem and you can find a solution that covers a lot of bases. Is the number one thing that you can do to build a business where it starts is to actually go find people who have problems and learn about their problems and then try to solve yeah. their problems. That's valuable to people. And if your paradigm is, um, I'm, you know, do an impersonation of uh, uh, an audio engineer here, you know, of like, I am the world's finest audio engineer and the world should hire me. <laughs> I am entitled. I am so good they would be stupid to not hire me. <laughs> Get the fuck away from that <laughs> mindset. I, do I drink that Kool-Aid all the way, man, to the dregs. Was obsessed with it. Years and years and years of my life were driven by uh, a fear of abandonment. And if maybe I was really good at something, especially music related, people would actually love me. You gotta process those feelings um, in order to access the fullness of, of, of your gift. You've got to do it because you your love it, not limited. so other people love you. You do it because you love it. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And the path to do that is to fall in love with everyone you have ever been. Um, and I still struggle with that. It's still, it's still, these thoughts still enter my mind that if I'm, you know, Napoleon Dynamite, <laughs> if I have skills, you know, chick stick skills, <laughs> right? <laughs> Probably autism. You just gave well, me an right? idea, Flap. I've just got the, the image of Napoleon Dynamite being in a fucking, like, metropolis or some shit, an ocean way or something like that, just <laughs> at the faders. God, yeah, dude, can God. you imagine? Dude, oh my. shut up, God. Dude, someone needs to make that content right now. Yeah, can we get Napoleon Dynamite becomes an audio engineer? And Oh my God, that'd be amazing. Oh, anyways, I hope that answers your, your guys' question. I just think it's all about, you want a good career, you got to invest and properly. Yourself, yeah. Best yeah. investment, it's you, it's you, it's clarity, peace. And it sucks at first, but... Man, is it great on the on the other end? On the other end, it's just it's an easier life. And when you sit down and your goal is to make art and express yourself versus earn other people's respect, it's a lot easier to make That's good a great art. Point. That's a really good point. And actually, I'd say Ed, that would be the best point to end um, this episode on Ed. And I, I'll let you see your catchphrase because I, I will say this is where your your catchphrase for the podcast probably has been. This is probably the best <sighs> way for you. Well. For your catchphrase. I've noticed in the comments that the catchphrase is catching on because people are saying it truly has been dot, dot, dot. And this episode is definitely, out of all of the ones we've done, I've lost count on how many we've done, including the Produce Like a Pro ones. But yeah, this, is, this has been emotional. Chris, it's been an absolute mm. pleasure having you on. Thank you for your wisdom, your positivity, your experience, your business insight, your encouragement, your enthusiasm. It's been a real honor and a oh, pleasure. You're so welcome. Well, well, let me, um, I know I'm not, you know, doing the six figure thing anymore, but let me give you a six figure salute because Ed, it took you a year of follow ups to get me to come <laughs> on your show. <laughs> you made it happen. <laughs> you made it happen. I was persistent. You, you pitched me on this almost exact, almost exactly a year ago. I it, was think. April, it was, it was an April. It was like man. nine months ago. Yeah. It was an, okay. Like yeah. Yeah. One, but... That's a long time. So I, I appreciate it. It was really fun for me to be on and, uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I hope. I hope the audio mate, turned out mate, great. You started in the light when we started the episode. <laughs> you were at. Oh yeah, it got dark here. So yeah. yeah. No, but again, really, really appreciate your time. 
Um, and again, because again, this episode in itself, in my opinion, is is unique selling point. Is again, it's content matter, and we've dived into so many different things. And again, I don't know other people that have had discussions like this when it comes to audio and diving into the business side. So honestly, man, appreciate your time. What? And yes, yeah, Ed, it's been emotional. And yes, any again, people um, listening to this, watching this. Feel free to leave your comments down below and again, share again stories of your mental health, how you've been, because mental health is important. So again, don't feel ashamed again to kind of speak openly and honest about things that you've been struggling with in your audio journey, because this is what this is. It is an audio journey and we're all in it together. And this is what we're trying to do is build a community um, where we can just share the journey and be honest and help everybody out. So there you have it, Chris. It's been an honor. Ed, I'd like to say it's been an honor. It's just been another week. I deeply appreciate it. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I, can, if I can add one last piece in here, um, if you guys think the work I'm doing is cool, um, go sign up for Bounce Butler. Uh, if you're an audio engineer and you're spending a lot of time bouncing, uh, go download that because any money that you spend on Bounce Butler um, gives me more free time to try and change laws and work on human rights and stuff. So, um, and anyone that's already using it, deeply appreciate it. It's, it's amazing. Thank you. <laughs>